lightning's coming. I've seen a couple good bolts just at my house. So for today's video, I'm gonna see if I can catch some lightning. Oh, that was a big one right back there. All right, we're gonna get going. I'm gonna see if I can show you guys some tips on how to shoot lightning during the daytime. Let's go find a better spot a little bit away from the lightning. Let's go. Storm is getting huge. There was like six bolts right there. Let's go get set up. Right here. There it goes, there's some more. All right, so I think I'm getting set up the way I want. And thank God Canon tells you there's no card in the camera because my space cadet. Okay, got a card. Got to get the composition. The hardest thing about shooting lightning, other than it's lightning and it's completely unpredictable, is the wind that comes with the lightning. The storm systems, especially out here in the southwest, are pushing a lot of wind out of their way. And uh, that's usually where you want to be. So what we've done, rather than try to get ahead of it, we've went and gone to the side of it. So the storm system is going to be moving that way, which is to our southwest and we're a little bit away from it and behind it. Usually, a lot of times I actually get in front of it and get the lightning as it's coming towards me, which is a little bit sketchy and always the windiest. So first thing, make sure you have a seriously solid tripod and a good heavy camera. And the next thing that's the most difficult about shooting lightning during the daytime is exposure. It's really bright. So, we're gonna be using filters. So I'm gonna be using two filters because that's all that I have right now for this. I'm gonna be using my uh, Polar Pro uh, circular polarizer and my six stop. If I had a 10 stop still, I would use that, but I don't have my 10 stop anymore. So I'm gonna stack these two and that's gonna give me close to eight stops. All right, next tip, once you got that on, you're gonna to wanna to use live view mode because it's gonna be dark as crap and you don't have time to be thinking about, well, what is six stops from you know, a 30th of a second or whatever. So with what I was saying about exposure during the daytime, if you have a filter, obviously it's easy to get those slow shutter speeds. However, with lightning, if you expose properly, then the ambient exposure is usually gonna knock out the lightning and you're not really gonna be able to see it. So you need to underexpose by at least one to two stops. And then once you do that, so right now, you probably can't see it. Whoops, I have it to touch and take the shot. So right now, uh, I have it set to two stops underexposed. What I'm gonna do is take one shot that's properly exposed for my foreground once I get my composition the way I want it, and then I'm gonna lock the tripod down, leave it there, and then two stops underexposed to really bring out the darkness of that because when the lightning strikes, then you'll be able to see it. Okay, so next tip, focus. What I'm doing since the lightning is so far away is I'm definitely focusing on infinity. I don't have anything going on in the foreground in this instance that I want to shoot. If you do do that, then normal landscape photography applies where you would either focus stack or whatever to blend. Uh, but in this case, focus on infinity, lock it down. The next thing, once we get the exposure the way we want it, we're gonna be doing a time lapse. That's what I'm gonna be doing. I have a built-in intervalometer on here. Otherwise, just keep clicking and just watch it and you're basically, you're effectively going to be doing a manual time lapse. But for this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and let it time lapse. All right, so I went ahead and got my uh, proper exposed for the road and everything. I like how the road is, in this case, curving into the lightning, which would be kind of cool. Normally, I just don't have time to get a composition. I probably shouldn't be wasting so much time talking about it right now. All right, so my final exposure for the lightning is with the six-stop circular polarizer. 
that's close to, it's like seven and a half to eight stops. My final setting is eight seconds at F22, and that puts me at one and two thirds stop underexposed. I'm also at about 35 millimeters. The lightning's pretty far away, so I'm hoping that'll work. All right, so I zoomed into like 45 millimeters now. Same settings though. All right, so I'm gonna start my interval, 10 second interval. I want it two seconds, eight second for the shutter speed, two second gap. Uh, you can lower that if you want. There it goes, it's just gonna start time lapsing. Hopefully any big bolts that we get back there now. And if you get more than one bolt in the shot over the time lapses and you wanna put all those together, I have a tutorial on how to do that. You can check that out right here. Whoa, you hear that thunder? So now let's just wait and see if we get anything. All right, new spot. We just got rained on in that spot that was over there because the storm is coming a little bit more towards us than I thought it was. But I uh, got a couple, whoa, that might've been a flash. I got a couple bolts behind me, got a nice composition. I love these textures in the clouds. I dropped the exposure down on this a little bit so y'all can see the crazy texture in those clouds right there. Looks awesome. So a couple more things about the long exposure that I wanted to mention is there's a real fine line with what you can get away with in these situations, especially for me out here where there's nothing to stop the wind. Southwest monsoons, lots of wind. For lightning, you typically want to have longer exposures. You know, you want that 30 second long exposure to be able to get more bolts. The, the chances of you catching a bolt in 30 seconds are better. However, the wind can really mess that up for you. So my 5D Mark IV is a decent camera in terms of weight. This Benro tripod is a decent camera, is a decent tripod in terms of weight, but they're not really that beefy. Uh, if I had like my 1DX, which I'm filming with, that's a bit heavier, you know, or if I had like a sandbag or something or my backpack hanging down, that would definitely help. But I'm still not gonna put, I'm not gonna be able to get away with a 30 second exposure out here. So what you would probably wanna do then is uh, go to a lower shutter speed somewhere around a couple of a seconds, which will still give you a good chance of catching the lightning and then reduce that interval time to like a second or that's about usually the least uh, interval time you can do. And then you may miss one, but over time, you know, 500 shots or 300 shots or whatever, there's a good chance that you will catch them. And there's also a good chance that they won't be blurry when you do catch them because 30 seconds out here in this wind, it's just too much. So that's just me and my experiences. So the key things are solid tripod, filters if you need them, if you can stop down if it's dark enough out, like around it's not dark enough now, if you can stop down to F22 or whatever. Uh, otherwise, filters, get an ND filter. The links for the ones that I use are down below if you want to check them out. I'm not sponsored by anybody, this is just what I use. So those are my recommendations. Uh, any good ND filter will work, whether it's round or square. And then the last tip would be time lapse, set your interval and keep it underexposed. Like I said, that's really important to catch those bolts out here. Otherwise the ambient light's just gonna drown them out. All right, so hopefully I got something from this. Uh, if I got anything, I'll put it up right now. If I didn't get anything, I'll also, well, I'll just go ahead and throw this up. So this is a shot that I got in Albuquerque, what was it, like a week ago, two weeks ago, something like that. Uh, I posted it on Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, you can check that out. Uh, you'll see it at Lightbenders Visuals is my Instagram handle. Uh, I post a lot of stuff like that. I post a lot of time lapses and definitely the lightning shots, but that shot is up there. It was similar conditions. It was uh, definitely daytime still, but it was a little bit darker, but it was still too bright that I needed the uh, ND filter. So I had that on, I had that six stop on, uh, and that's that image. So if I didn't get anything today, then you'll have this image. And um, I think that that's kind of the similar situations. And if I did, then I'll post it here at the end. So if you have any questions about anything that I went over or didn't go over concerning what I'm doing and how I'm shooting the lightning during the daytime, leave those in the comments below and I'll definitely answer them. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I've got new videos every Tuesday and Friday. Hit that like button if this video helped you out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Look at those mammoth clouds. You see that? Oh, love that stuff.